Good morning, folks. We've continued to watch solar flares erupt from the sunspot active regions. We had a geomagnetic storm overnight. We'll peek in on seismicity in the global climate report as well, but we are starting, as always, with the sun. The last 24 hours on our star continued to present filaments being jittery, impulsive solar flare events at the incoming north and south active regions, and the southern coronal holes turning in. We expect the faster stream from those coronal holes to arrive at Earth early next week. Looking at the GOES X-ray flux, we see the flaring continued to hit mid-M-class range, but without long-duration events. We will watch those eruptions in 131 angstroms and see that once again, there was a nice spread of the flaring between the north and south. Those active regions will be directly facing the Earth early next week, so we'll be keeping an eye on their development. The solar wind intensified slightly last night, but more important than the density peak or the faster stream speed was in blue, the phi angle flip of hitting the sun's electric current sheet and the magnetic reversal of the fields contained within the solar wind. It drove level 2 geomagnetic storms last night which are lasting into the morning here. Moderate solar storm impact but a good reminder that sometimes the current sheet can work our planetary magnetic condition all by itself. So from a space weather perspective, in the coming days, we'll continue to watch these several plasma filaments, definitely going to be monitoring the north and south incoming sunspot groups, and we expect another solar wind intensification from the southern coronal holes early next week. All of the top seismicity of the last day was of the aftershock variety. Couple big ones there in the wake of the magnitude 7.7 .7 event we saw in yesterday's show. We are likely to be shaking there for a couple days after that one. Lastly, folks, the Global Climate Report for April is out and veteran observers know what they're about to see. Here's the quantitative look at where we were below versus above average. And then this is what's making its way around the internet, a qualitative map that has areas painted red that were clearly below average temperatures when you go by the numbers. They get away with this by using a longer timeline for that one, comparing to the deep temperature minimum of more than 100 years ago, when this, the 30-year comparison, tells us much more about how we're actually trending in terms of climate. We greatly appreciate your support. Once again, eyes on the sun. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.